I was the fifth hippie in Tampa, Florida. The first was called Maynard. And when he came to town, they put it in the paper. Hippie comes to town. This has to be 66, maybe 67. Uh, and Maynard brought some LSD with him. He brought some LSD that was made by uh, Osley, who a lot of you who know about LSD will know is like the finest maker of LSD in the world, later called himself the bear. And he's no longer with us. But I think his LSD is somewhere or other if they haven't lost the recipe. Well, Maynard gathered a group of kids. He was older than us. We used to hang out at the White Castle on Henderson Avenue in Tampa, Florida, which is right near my school, Madison Junior High. And an older boy that I was afraid of, he was uh, a surfer. Now, in those days, there were like surfers who wore what's called a Gantt shirt, penny loafers with pennies in them, and had their hair like a little beetle thing here in the front, but the rest was really short. And so that's how you knew they were a surfer. I don't think they surfed, but that's what they were called. He was the son of a golf pro. He was a tough guy, Pat. And the only time he would talk to me was when he wanted to, like, beat me up or something. <laughs> but he came up to me in, in the hall and said, Hey, Jeff. Yeah, what? How you doing, man? He's going to be nice to me today. I'm, I'm doing okay, he said, with, you know, with some <laughs> suspicion that I was about to get punched out, sucker punched. He said, no, man, how you doing? Uh, oh, okay, how you doing, Pat? Fine. He said, listen, uh, would you like to buy some LSD? And I said, what's LSD? <laughs> And he said, well, you know, it, you must have heard about LSD. I mean, you know, it, oh, right, yeah, the drug, LSD, I think, yeah. Maynard and those guys, yeah, that's right, Maynard at the White Castle. And all, it's, yeah. This is, what is it? It's called, he showed it to me. It's called Strawberry Barrel, which was like a little tiny pill, very tiny, but it was kind of, should have been like that, but it was kind of like that. It was a barrel. It's like a little strawberry barrel. A piece of candy. And I said, well, how much is it? And he said, four dollars. I said, well, man, I don't have no four dollars. That's ridiculous. He said, nah. I said, he said, well, how much do you get for your lunch money? I said, I get 50 cents a day. He said, I'll tell you what. You give me 50 cents a day. You give me your lunch money until we can get it up to four dollars. And we're good. I'll take payments. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I, well what, is, what is it doing? Look, man, look, just, trust me. And I see you hanging out with Maynard at the, at the White Castle. This is what the hippies do. You, you want to be a hippie? Yeah, I think I do. Well, then, here. So he gave it to me wrapped in a gum wrapper, a juicy fruit wrapper. So I took it home. I got home. I locked the door. I looked at it. You know, I looked at it. Wow, that's far. What is that? Something. Whoa, LSD. And this ain't no. This ain't no. This is what not what they have today. This is like 250 micrograms of very potent, very pure LSD into the 13, 14 year old mind of a little kid in Tampa, Florida. So somehow or other, maybe through my mother. I was given the money, we didn't have any money ever, uh, to go see Steppenwolf and uh, Iron Butterfly at the McKay Auditorium. <laughs> of course, Steppenwolf had Born to be Wild with John Kay with the sunglasses and the leather jackets and uh, Iron but Butterfly had In a God of the Vida, baby. They only had one song as far as I know. So anyway, that was the show. That's, that was fucking fantastic show that I'm going to... Steppenwolf, Born to be Wild, God damn the Pusher Man. All that, I mean, you know, I, who, didn't, who didn't like Born to be Wild even today, you know? When you get in the car 
God forbid you ride a motorcycle. So I went to see Steppenwolf and uh, Iron Butterfly. And as I was walking in, I reached in my pocket and I, oh, what's that? Oh, it's the LSD. <laughs> so I thought, well, if there was ever a time, this is it. So I took it. And John Kay came on and he was like, wow, a human being. He's not on TV. It's like a real dude. And he's singing Born to be Wild. And just as they kind of like got into, I probably couldn't have been the first song, but just as they got into maybe, let's just say it was the, the Pushy Man. Goddamn, goddamn, the Pushy Man. Something started to happen. <laughs> I could see the air. I could see squiggly things in the air. I could see geometric patterns over everything. The sound was going like that. It was doing strange things. And uh, I looked around the room and everybody seemed to be in a rather similar condition. <laughs> I remember one father. There's some like very cute girls back in those days. They used to iron their hair, by the way. My, my ex-wife used to do that. They would have long hair part in the middle. They'd take an ironing board and they or their, I guess they or their friends would iron their hair so it was super straight. So there was a real good looking, like maybe 14 or 15 year old blind girl down right near the stage because that's where the pretty girls always were. And some father ripped through the crowd and let me in there and you come with me, young lady. I'm taking you out of this place of ill repute. And that, and that kind of flipped everybody out for a moment. So, I was, re okay, things went from pleasant geometric patterns, squiggly things in the air, kind of far out little aural things, <laughs> added to the music, and everybody feeling a sense of unity to, like, becoming a little frightening, and then becoming a lot frightening because it was 250 micrograms of really good LSD. So I had to get some air. I had to get out of there. So I went outside and I leaned against the flagpole. Just caught my breath. I just I'll go back in, in a minute and wipe my brow and trying to get it together, tripping like a, sorry, like a motherfucker. And happened to look up there was a brass plaque on the on the flagpole and it said in memory of Jeffrey Joseph Juliana born September 11th 1953 <laughs> died and it had <laughs> that date on it <laughs> so I ran down the fucking street. That was at the Fort Homer Hesterly Armory towards Kennedy Boulevard. And I ran all the way home. It seemed like two minutes, but it's actually about five miles. <laughs> I closed myself up in my bedroom and started until it started to wear off. Now, you would think that anyone with good sense, that would have been the first and only time. But... Uh, that they would subject themselves to that. But actually, and this was made fun of later by Olivia Harrison when I mentioned it in an interview, I must have done two or 300 of those trips back in the day. I liked the LSD. And uh, I think it only did me good, by the way. Yeah, I think it only did me good. Kind of put me outside the box and never let me back in. <laughs> But God bless you, Pat, wherever you are, for selling me that LSD for four bucks and letting me make payments on my lunch money, which I duly paid every day, 50 cents. It was a wonderful experience to see uh, Born, uh, to, to hear Born to be Wild played by Steppenwolf. In, in a God of the Vida, not so much. I put them kind of on a level, this Grand Funk Railroad, if you remember them. I'm getting closer to my home. They had one song. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's uh, what I have to say about, uh, about now, of course, children don't do that. Wink, wink. Um, I don't think you could if you wanted to. They lost the recipe.
so I've been told I'm be really scared to do it at this point so thank you very much that's my little rant about the first time I took LSD back in the 60s